Welcome back. For Rodney Smith, the act of mowing the lawn is much more than just something to check off a to-do list. The Alabama man has mowed his way through all 50 states five times over, cutting lawns free of charge for veterans, single moms, the elderly, and disabled people. He started his company called Raising Men Lawn Care Service, inspiring young people to serve their communities. In 2015, I was, at this time, I was getting my bachelor's in computer science in my senior year, and I came across this elderly man outside mowing his lawn, and it looked like he was struggling, so I pulled over and helped him out. And that night, I decided I'll start mowing free lawns for the elderly, disabled, single parents, and veterans in Huntsville, Alabama. And at first, my goal was to mow 40 lawns by the end of winter, because like I said, at the time, I was getting my, my bachelor's in computer science in my senior year, so I thought I could mow 40 lawns in between classes. But I moved 40 lawns so quick that I, my goal to 100. A month and a half later, I reached my 100th lawn. And that's when the idea of raising men lawn care service came about, where I'll still mow free lawns for the elderly, disabled, single parents, and veterans. But now I'll also include kids ages 7 to 17 and show them the importance of giving back to their community with a lawnmower. And so you've gotten a lot of these young people involved, and they make a commitment as well. How many states are you in? How many kids have signed up for this? So we're... We're in every single state. We have at least one kid in each state. Um, the, kid, the state with the most kids is, uh, I believe, Texas, with about 100-something kids. And then um, we're in every single state. We're in also in eight other different countries. So we're in the United States, of course, but Canada, Bermuda, England, Australia, Germany, <laughs> Japan, Sweden, and recently South Africa. So kids around the world are taking part in this mission. It's just amazing. And it's such a simple thing that once it's done, it's done. There's a before and an after. There's something really um, that gives you a feeling of accomplishment about mowing a lawn. How, how have you heard back from people who've had their lawns taken care of in terms of what it means to them? Oh, it means, it means so much to so many because, you know, we only mow for the elderly, disabled, single parents, and veterans, and most of them are on fixed incomes and really can't afford it. So when a kid right. can come mow the lawn for free, I mean, it just takes a burden off, off their backs, and it just means so much to them. And for the kids, what does it give them? Oh, I mean, sense of pride in knowing they're doing something good. You know, I remember it was one kid in Texas that recently completed the 50-yard challenge. She was telling me when I went to present him his brand-new lawnmower and stuff, that, you know, at first he really disliked it. He, he didn't want to do it. But after a while, he saw that he was making an impact in his community. And he said he loves doing it. And he's, he will continue to roll now that he's finished with our 50-yard challenge. That's awesome. So you mentioned the 50-yard challenge, and it is for boys and girls. Tell us more about it. So the 50-yard challenge is a challenge that we have issued the kids nationwide and even worldwide. So let's say you get a kid in, in Washington that accepted our 50-yard challenge. They'll make a sign saying, I accept the 50-yard challenge. In return, we will send them a white raising men or a white raising women's t-shirt along with shades and ear protection. Once they mow 10 lawns, they got an orange shirt, 20 earns a green shirt, 30 a blue shirt, 40 a red, and 50 lawns earns a black shirt. And once they mow 50 lawns, I will drive to wherever they are in the United States or fly if they're in a different country. <laughs> and I will present them a brand new lawnmower, weed eater, and blower for completing this 50-yard challenge. And uh Everything's donated to uh, people that support the organization, our Raising Men Lawn Care Service family. So we have an Amazon wish list where people go and buy these items that we have on this wish list. They're sent to my, my house. That's a wonderful thing to do. And when you go to present to the kids, you often do a few lawns together, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if a kid is up to it, I'll mow some lawns with them. <laughs> <laughs> most kids you know, are so excited just to get the items, you know, after working so hard. And I made a promise to every kid that completes it, you know, I'll personally deliver it. So it doesn't matter where the kid is, you know, uh, um, I'm going to deliver it. So you finished your master's, you've been busy, you still managed to, to run this organization and get all this stuff done. How are you doing that, first of all? Um, grace of God, I mean, just, he makes it all possible. I mean, if it wasn't for him, you know, this wouldn't be possible. It goes back to when I first finished high school, I finished my last few years of high school up, upstate New York. I had a small boarding school for kids with learning disabilities. I had a learning disability, and I graduated there. I went to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to attend ITT Tech. And I was there at ITT Tech for about six months. And during, during those six months, almost every day I was calling back home and saying, I wanted to come home because, you know, I, I disliked it. And I remember one night just asking God to use me as his vassal. And after saying that, you know, I got a sense of relief. I like, man, like a, a, some pressure was off my chest. And then, you know, he didn't give me an answer that day, not a month later, not even a year later. It would happen about 
four to five years later, and that's when I came across the elderly man outside Millions Lawn. I just felt that God said, look, you asked me four or five years ago that you want me to use you as your vessel. I've been preparing you and leading you up to this moment where I saw that elderly man moaning, and it's just like, here's, here's that moment. Here's what I want you to do. And ever since that day, I've been mowing free lawns, and, and ever since that day, starting the organization. What do you think this project means right now in this time of turmoil and a pandemic and people at home and people have lost jobs or are furloughed? Yeah. What can a project like this mean to us as a society? Um, that, you know, it's, it's for the kids, you know, it's for them to get out there and, and do good in the community. You know, they could be inside right now playing video games, but they're out being productive. And, and the lesson that I want the kids to learn is it's more important to, uh, to give before you receive. And for everyone else, you know, um, there's many ways to make a difference. You know, a lot of people are going through hard times. And if you can give back, just find a way to give back. Um, we simply do the long care. Someone else might find a different way to give back. That's so why I encourage them to do that. Rodney, it's amazing.